Hello everyone, and welcome to Whiskey Wednesday. Uh, quite a different twist. I have realised that I quite enjoy drinking affordable, I don't like to use the word cheap, but very affordable blended whiskies when going about my kind of nightly tasks. That sounds quite odd, so I'm just going to go into that. But when reading or trying to write something for the channel or for some other stuff that I do or uh, just trying to watch a film, I've realised that drinking significantly more affordable, unwallet breaking whiskey is easier. Um, you know, pouring something like a Cavalan single cask or one of the like the compass boxes I have behind me or the Blair 1990, I realise I'm beginning to pay more attention to the whiskey than I am to the film or to the thing I'm trying to write or to the thing I'm trying to read. So, rediscovering a love for these, we've reviewed Canadian Club in the past, J&B Rare. We should probably do a video about the Johnny Walker range, but everyone is kind of doing that right now. Um, but we're going to be doing Famous Grouse, or Smoky Black. They used to be called Black Grouse, which I do think was a better name. I think Smoky Black sounds a little bit odd. Um, and we'll be doing another blended whiskey for next week's video. But a little history about Famous Grouse. It's one of the biggest selling brands in the UK. I don't know about the world, but definitely in the UK. Most of it gets sold around Christmas time. Uh, initially created by Matthew Glaug, G-L-O-A-G, um, in 1896, and it officially became the famous grouse in 1905. Um, I, this obviously isn't the original label because this is a different whiskey as to what the original famous grouse is, but his daughter, whose name I've sadly forgotten, drew the original um, bird for that, the original grouse drawing. So it's quite a fun bit of history for you. Regarding its sales, I think in 1984 it got a royal warrant, which it should still bear now. It's just on over the grouse's little tail, just there. And it roughly sells around 2 million, I think, cases per year, which is an insane amount of whiskey. 2 million cases. Mostly in the UK, in supermarkets. That's the standard bottling, not this one though. But that just gives you a scope for its size. This is owned by Edrington Beam Centauri. Although the distillery in which it is made is not. The Glen Turret Distillery is now owned by Lalique, uh, which is a Swiss sort of crystal company, or a glass company, I should say. Um, but Edrington remained having the rights to famous grouse. So this typically would be a whiskey made up of things like Macallan, Highland Park, uh, Glengarry, Beaumont, Laphroaig, maybe. But we know that Macallan don't really bottle whiskey younger than seven years old. I think this is probably just on the cusp of that, really, um, along with the grain whiskey inside it, which comes from the North British Whiskey Distillery, which is in Scotland, but it's in the southern part of Scotland, so they are, you know, it is North British, technically. But the main peated element of this, which is only made for one week per year, much like what Balveni do with their peated malts, um, I'm going to butcher the name of this, but I think it's translated from Gaelic as uh, Rory Moor, which is the peter type of Glen Turret, which they release or they make once a year. That's all put together with this. Uh, it's mainly bourbon influence. There is a sherry cask version. There is a, a port cask version. There's a mainly bourbon cask influence version. This is probably all bourbon cask. Uh, it's not natural color. It is chill filtered because it's only 18 pounds a bottle. Um, that's the history of grouse. I think it's something always worth thinking about because even though blended whiskey is still sort of looked down upon, 90% of whiskey sales in the world are blended whiskey. The 10% is single malt, um, which is significantly higher value, but without stuff like this, we really couldn't do all the stuff we do with whiskey now. So it is important. We like to pay atonement to that. But now to the whiskey itself. Do a little swizzle, it's been sat there for a while. Not loads of smoke, but you shouldn't expect it. This isn't an. This is not a Isla. That sentence is a failure. This is not an Isla heavy whiskey. It's kind of meant to represent the smells and the uh, invocative feeling of those whiskies without throwing loads of heavily peated stuff in there. Just like a little bit, just to give you a bit of a turning point. Because the people who buy this on a regular basis aren't going to be the people who are spending a hundred pounds on a new Macallan release 
or 150 pounds on a new Ardbeg release. They're just people who want something easy to drink for whatever occasion it may be. So there's not loads of smoke running through it, but it does have a beautiful nose of caramel. I've always smelt carrot cake. I've had this bottle for about two weeks now and it just, this carrot cake, kind of earthy, sweet, lightly spiced nose. The grain is providing that huge hit of caramel and vanilla. It's just really sweeping through the back. There is that slight bite that young grain gives you, that almost kind of plasticky tone, um, which I don't mind because I like grain whiskey, but for some people that might be the bit that puts them off blended styles. And then yeah, hidden within there, there is a waxiness, like a, an East Coast Highland style to it. Um, Glen Turret normally is this kind of toffeed, soft, buttery whiskey. There may be some Glengarry in here, you never know, um, but there is like a waxy oak, um, not quite citrusy, but something like a candle wax sort of aroma to it. And the smoke is hiding away. It's very gentle. It's almost like a very soft, like barbecue smoke. You know, a couple of hours after you've kind of killed the barbecue, you can still kind of smell it smoldering in the background. Very gentle on the smoky style. And then there's a nice bit of orange pulling through in there as well, which is quite a typical Glen Turret note from Glen Turrets of old, which I've tried. But let's taste it and see what 18 pounds can get you. Yeah, it's very sweet. As you'd expect, designed for a more everyday palate rather than that of someone who's been drinking whiskey for like loads of different whiskeys for a very long time. Yeah, the caramel and the vanilla really push through. There's toffee, there's honey. It's only really when the whiskey starts to get to like the midsection of your tongue and after you've actually swallowed it, does the smoke really kind of make itself well known. I will say now that if you like smoky whiskies, like big smoky whiskies, like Lagavulin's and Ardbeg's, even things like Johnny Walker Black, which has significantly more smoke in it than this does. This probably won't be for you. Um, we've talked about introductory peated whiskies in the past. This is like a step below introductory. And that's not in any sort of battle means to it. I don't think it's bad in any way. You get what you pay for with 18 pounds. But if you were to buy this, don't expect a rip-roaring kind of medicinal hug of smoke. It's very gentle, it lingers in the background. It's almost sweet, like a Kalila smoke, but really pulled back. Um, and even on the finish now, there's that kind of, that whirlwind of soft bitter orange and that little bit of kind of wispy smoke just in the back. Let's try again. Salted caramel, moving into sweeter, savory things. And there's a bitterness, which I always associate with orange, but it's it's earthier again, like that carrot cake note, uh, carrot cake note I first smelt. Dark chocolate, a little bit of tobacco, and the smokiness kind of revealing itself a bit more. But all in all, it's a whiskey you don't particularly have to think about, which I like, because I think about whiskey a lot, and sometimes it can be very tiring and leads into many arguments on YouTube comment sections and Facebook groups and all kinds of stuff. Um, this is something I can literally just pour, enjoy because it's whiskey and read or watch or write something. And I really do like that, um, which is why it's so affordable and why it sells 2 million bottles or 2 million cases or however much it is a year. It's not gonna score exceptionally high. Um, I'm gonna give this like a solid six and a half in the realms of blended whiskies, if I wanted more smoke, I'd probably go to Johnny Walker Black Label or Double Black. Um, if I wanted something that was as sweet, but maybe um, a little bit riper with those fruits, I'd turn to something like Jameson's. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not a bad whisky at all. Like a solid six and a half from me for the famous grouse, Smoky Black. It would 
still be better if it was called Black Grouse. I'm just gonna say that, Edrington, if you're listening. I think it sounds better as a name. You don't watch this channel, but you never know. Um, but yeah, a whiskey that you don't have to think about, that you can just pour and enjoy, neat, mixed, ice, whatever takes your fancy. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching. This is Whiskey Wednesday, and I'll see you all next week. Cheers.